After an owner breeds or buys a horse, they usually spend hours trying to find a suitable name for their noble steed. Melbourne owner John Manzin did things in reverse in the mid-80s. He already had a good name picked out, Rufus Youngblood. All he needed was a horse good enough to carry the name with distinction. John Manzin, the owner, who I tried a few horses for, he, he said to me once, if we ever get a good horse, I want to call him Rufus Youngblood. And that didn't tell me why at the time, and I thought, well, he'd have to be a pretty good horse to carry a name like that round. But in fact, he was named after the, the bodyguard of, of uh, President Johnson, who was vice president at the time that uh, John Kennedy was assassinated, and Rufus Young uh, Blood, uh, an American Indian, was his bodyguard in the car behind the president, and he threw himself across the, uh, the vice president. And uh, when he came to Australia later, uh, President Johnson for Harold Holt's funeral, he brought Rufus Youngblood with him and he did jog in beside the limousine from the Essen Airport to the, to the Southern Cross Hotel and was abused and splattered with paint because at the time the Australians were in Vietnam and they were blaming the Americans for that. And uh, John decided when he seen the carriage of this man that if he had a good horse he'd call him Rufus Youngblood and that's how he got his name. Manzin bred his youngster by Sprinkler out of Elma Nandina and gave him to popular BIAC horseman Dick Lee to train. Lee had won five races with Elma Nandina before she turned sour and decided not to try. Manzin then sent her to stud and bred Rufus Youngblood. Rufus Youngblood had 13 starts as a two-year-old during the 1985-86 season for one win, two seconds and four thirds, earning a modest $6,815. Well, he, he did a, a fire as a late two-year-old, but he was pretty erratic and certainly had a mind of his own. And, I, and uh, he was like an overactive kid sort of business. And, but he did show us at two that there was a lot of ability there. And I think we just had to piece all, everything else around it and, and he was you know three before that happened. It was as a three-year-old in 1986-87 however that Rufus Youngblood really came of age. He had 23 starts that season for 14 wins, four seconds and two-thirds and two hundred and thirty thousand dollars in stake money and won an unprecedented four derbies. The first of his Blue Riband victories was the $25,000 South Australia Derby at Globe Derby Park in January 1987. Halfway around the top turn, Rupert's young blood, four metres clear of plain wrapper. Here's Jeremiah Weed coming out wider on the track, further back then to the spokesman, and they were followed by Dory Sun, but on the turn, Rupert's young blood kicked away, got six metres on plain wrapper. Jeremiah Weed finishing on down the outside, and then Dory Sun out wide, but Rupert's young blood is too strong, and it's going to be Rupert's young blood's Winfield Derby. It wins by eight metres. Plain wrapper second, two metres back, Jeremiah Weed. A month later, Rufus Youngblood bumped into the unbeaten Sir Lorian in a heat of the Victoria Derby at Mooney Valley. The Ron Peace trained Sir Lorian had won his three previous starts at Mooney Valley and was favourite at even money with Rufus Youngblood at 6-4. to four. Sir Lorian won by a half head, but Rufus Youngblood was gallant in defeat after leading the outside horses throughout. A week later, he could manage only sixth behind Sir Lorian in the $65,000 derby final. Once again, he had no luck, being trapped four wide early from his extreme outside draw. Given a few weeks off at a Lara adjustment farm while Dick Lee went across New Zealand to campaign Game Ebony at the Inter-Dominion Series at Alexandra Park in Auckland, Rufus Youngblood bounced back with four straight wins. Rufus Youngblood took his career earnings close to $100,000 when he turned in an outstanding performance to win the $80,000 Victoria Sire Stake final at Mooney Valley in late April. First, around the turn of the 9.50, a lap left to go. Rufus Youngblood worked early. Here's Jalopy now from second last. He pulls to the outside, three wide. The Mr. Racing second, Jalopy out, three wide, making ground. Swing parade on the leaders back as Jalopy revved up, draws two metres in front. He's trying to cross Rufus Youngblood with a second to go. He couldn't. Rufus Youngblood booted up and joined Jalopy out of the straight. He's had no peace, Rufus Youngblood. He laid in on top of Jalopy for a stride, live in the straight, then swing parade third on the inside of the mister. In behind them came Fennec on the outside of Baddick Print. Back in behind them, Gigolo. Sir Lorian second last. He'll have the last crack at them and four metres away. Aim first. At the 550, Rufus Youngblood by a metre to Jalopy. Six metres away, third is the mister. Here's Sir Lorian now from second and third last. He goes to the outside 
given a cut with a cane. Fennec pulls out in front of him. Vatic Printers held up, followed by Swing Parade. Then Gigolo and last is aimed first. Off the back of the front, Rufus Youngblood, two metres in front. I reckon he's got Jalopy beat on the outside. Sir Laurie and three wide gets to third. Then the Mister under pressure, followed by Fennec. Gigolo pulls to the outside from aim first and Vatic Printer. And Swing Parade is dropping off. Rufus Youngblood straightens up two and a half metres in front. Sir Laurie and is trying hard. Here's Gigolo on the outside making ground, but Rufus Youngblood got away with 100 metres to go. Aim first from the clouds is making ground, but what a performance by Rufus Youngblood. A mighty effort. Rufus Youngblood wins by five metres. On the outside, aim first, I reckon, has run second. Maybe Sir Laurie and third. A nose to Gigolo. The victory lifted Rufus Youngblood's stake earnings to 95,500 from nine wins and 11 placings from 29 starts. But Lee intimated he could have a new driver in the Australian Derby later in the month, as Lee was going to New Zealand with top trotter Game Ebony for the Rowe Cup. Lee went off to New Zealand with Game Ebony, but returned to Victoria to prepare Rufus Youngblood for his tilt at the $75,000 Australian Derby at Mooney Valley in May. Ted Demler was engaged to drive the gelding in the Derby preview and the big one. A prohibitive four to one on favourite in the preview, Rufus Youngblood jumped straight to the front and made a one act affair of the race when he went to the line virtually untouched by Demler to score in hollow fashion by five metres. A week later, Demler was labelling Rufus Youngblood an inter-dominion horse of the future. Rufus Youngblood led throughout and proved too fast and strong for his rivals in the Australian Derby. Down the straight a circuit to go and Rufus Youngblood quickening up his three metres in front. The race thriller has worked on the outside. In behind them, Sir Lorian racing third. Every chance, Trunky Sting on the outside as they head to the back after the bell in the derby. My third on the inside, followed by Lynn Agar, Jeremiah Weed. Second last, another shy and still last is Chataway Boy. Down the back of the 750, Rufus Youngblood, he found four metres the race ruler. Two metres away, third, Sir Lorian, followed by Trunky Sting. Back in behind them, My third on, followed by Lynn Agar, Jeremiah Weed. And five metres, another shy, followed by Chataway Boy. Rufus Youngblood giving plenty of cheek at the 450. He's four metres in front. The race ruler called upon on the outside. Sir Lorian's in need of a run third. Then Trunky Sting about to peel to the outside, followed by My Serdon. Lin Agar back in behind them at Rufus Youngblood raced away on the turn. The race ruler not going well. Then My Serdon from Jeremiah Weed, another shy and six metres away. Chataway Boy at the 150. Rufus Youngblood well clear. It's a Victorian Derby. A Victorian Quinella. Sir Lorian getting into second placing. The race ruler won't run a drum and it's Rufus Youngblood all the way. Rufus Youngblood by six metres, Sir Lorian. Four metres away, third. My third on maybe a nose to Trunkies. Rufus Youngblood started only second favourite behind former New Zealand youngster Gay Adam in the $60,000 New South Wales derby on the 12th of June. In one of the best front-running performances seen at the Glebe Paceway for many years, Rufus Youngblood ended Gay Adam's winning sequence. Smashing area code's track record by 1.6 seconds, he recorded a stunning 255.1 for 23.50 metres, a mile rate of 159.9, in his four-metre victory after carting a flat tyre for the final 900 metres. ...out of the field, the first quarter of the last mile pretty quickly in 30.4, and Rufus Youngblood defies them. It's break a length on... Running second, he's a knob. Ahead away third, it's Mr. T. Now here's Gay Adam off around them out three deep. They're followed on the outside of runners by the spokesman. The favourite's printing quickly now. He's got up on the outside of the spokesman and pale face Marvel. Followed further back by Jalopy Semi Seth. And at the tail of the field, Original Sin. Into the home straight they come now with a bell ringing. And in front, Rufus Youngblood with Gay Adam out three deep around. He's a knob. It's Mr. T's in behind that division. Followed further back in the field by the spokesman. Then came Jalopy. The Favourite one off the fence now from Original Sin Semi Seth and Pale Face Marvel 30 metres away. It looks like a race in three as they head to the 600. Rufus Youngblood by a length on Gay Adam second. It's Mr T is running third up on the inside. Followed further back by the spokesman and they've beaten off He's an Ob and Jalopy as they go to the 400 now. And Rufus Youngblood still in front. It's break a length on Gay Adam. The spokesman running home behind them from It's Mr T on the inside behind the leader then Jalopy as they come up to the 200 now. It's Rufus Youngblood in front. It leads by a length on Gay Adam. Now here's this Mr T coming off the fence. Behind them uh, was the spokesman. Into the straight they come and Rufus Youngblood kicked away from it.
It's Mr. T and Gay Adam. Rufus Youngblood now in front. It's careering away from it's Mr. T and Gay Adam. The spokesman on the outside might get up and run third, but Rufus Youngblood has won. Rufus Youngblood on the line has got there by probably three metres. Second placing goes to it's Mr. T. Third, probably the spokesman in front of Gay Adam. A week after adding that classic to his already impressive tally, Rufus Youngblood and Dick Lee continued heading north, this time for the Queensland Derby at Albion Park and a return clash with Gay Adam. The race was billed as a dead set match race, and the Albion Park crowd could not have asked for better value for money. Punters who had backed the Victorian into 5-4 to four on favouritism had their hearts in their mouths in the early stages, however, when Gay Adam flew from the machine to take up the running, a role normally occupied by Rufus Youngblood. Rufus Youngblood running second, he's deep on the track. It's Riley, two lengths away third, followed by April Charger, back along the inside, Miss Avril, and then True to Gamble, who's racing a bit wide on the outside of Fan the Fire, Resemblance getting back, then Chataway Boy, and Paladin drops towards the rear. Gay Adam's going to hold Rufus out. Lee's pulled the whip on Rufus Youngblood. Gay Adam and Rufus Youngblood, they're going crazy in the early stages of the race. They're about six lengths in front of the third horse. Lee's the first one to ease out of the speed battle. He's going to drop him back 32.6. They're hot, these leaders, as they race to the top bend. And it's Gay Adam, the leader. Gay Adam leads by almost two lengths. In second place, Rufus Youngblood, followed by April Charger, moving up without cover. It's Riley, a neck away third on the inside. A length further back then to fan the fire over on the rails is Miss Avril, true to gamble, covering resemblance, and then Paladin and Chataway Boy. Here's the first quarter of the mile coming up. They slowed in that one, 31. They'd want to slow. They went crazy in the early stages. Gay Adams the leader. Gay Adams a length in front. April Charger second. Rufus Youngblood now in a pocket. He's locked away third on the inside. Followed by It's Riley. He was able to work off the rails there. It's Riley. Out deep on the track, fan the fire. Miss Avril next on the inside. Then true to gamble. Third last the rails is resemblance. And then Paladin and Chataway Boy last of all. 8.50 metres to go. Gay Adams the leader, a length in front. Rufus Youngblood right up on his back in second place. Second quarter of the flying mile, 32.1. Gay Adam takes him to the tea trees, a length and a half in front. Rufus Youngblood still on his back in a pocket as April Charger is a head away third on the outside. A length then to Ed's Riley, who's got the drop on them. Over on the inside is Miss Avril, then Fan the Fire, feeling the pinch. Resemblance, true to Gamble. Then Chataway Boy and Paladin is last. Gay Adam in front, 450 metres to go. Rufus Youngblood is clear now. He's coming after Gay Adam. They're well clear of Miss Avril. One galloped in the run. It's Riley. Dropped back very quickly. April Charger running fourth. They head towards the home turn. Third quarter of the mile, 30.9. They've got 300 metres to go. This is what we've been waiting for. Gay Adam the inside. Rufus Youngblood the outside. They're locked together. Rufus Youngblood has moved up. He's poked his nose in front. Rufus Youngblood just in front of Gay Adam. They're Fighting it out. Rufus Youngblood the outside. Gay Adam kicking again the inside. Rufus Youngblood, Gay Adam. It's going to be a ding dong as they hit it. Dead heat. Dead heat between Rufus Youngblood and Gay Adam. They streeted the rest of the field. 15 lengths away third was Miss Avril. Followed Despite the Paladin thousands who packed the huge Albion Park stand to the rafters, one could have heard a pin drop as the judge made his decision with Rufus Youngblood rewriting the history books as he was announced the winner. Russ Hinn's making the presentation that night, um, likening it to Bone Crusher and Waverly Star in the Cox Plate. And, and it was just a battle of two horses. They were head and head down the straight. And, and when we got to the line, neither David Aiken or myself knew who had won. And uh, because it had been billed that way by the two papers in Brisbane for a week, the uh, the ideal uh, result would have been a dead heat. It was only an inch uh, separated them, but luckily that was the inch that gave him the four derbies. The official margin was a nose, but although many believed a dead heat would have been a fitting result, Rufus Youngblood had clearly proven himself Australia's best three-year-old for 1986-87. That was confirmed later in the year when Rufus Youngblood was announced as Australian Harness Horse of the Year. He had earlier been acclaimed Australian three-year-old pacer of the year, joining Run Joe Run in 1979 as only the second three-year-old to achieve that rare double. Rufus Youngblood had 19 starts as a four-year-old during the 1987-88 season for seven wins, five seconds and one third. Dick Lee set Rufus Youngblood for the prestigious Golden Nugget series for four-year-olds at Gloucester Park that season, but before heading west he made a clean sweep of the Victoria Sire Stakes series at Mooney Valley. 
he became only the fifth pacer to win dual size stake finals, taking his career earnings to more than $292,000. 500 out down the back, Rufus Youngblood being held together two and a half metres in front of Kentucky George on the outside. He's on a loose frame and under pressure. Baddick Print on the leader's back, followed by Tiger Star. In behind them, Double Barrel, followed by Kenya Rowan, Ben Chifley. Then current assets and Boydale. Rufus Youngblood swept away 250 out on the turn. Six metres in front. Baddick Print gets to a clear second. Kentucky George not going well. Double Barrel gets to third, followed by Tiger Star. But Rufus Youngblood's a mile in front of the top of the straight. In behind them, Ben Chifley getting out and making ground. But Rufus Youngblood will bolt in. Look at him go. A powerhouse. Rufus Youngblood. He's striding away to score by 12 metres. Rufus Youngblood, 12 metres to Baddick Print, 4 metres away, third Kentucky, George. He's Later that week, Rufus Youngblood and Dick Lee headed to Perth for the Golden Nugget. While Al Maestro's name went into the record books, it could easily have been Rufus Youngblood, who was desperately unlucky. 900 metres to go and down Maestro. On the bit leads for Vin Knight. A half length over Smooth Prince, the outside at his girth. On the fence, Rufus Youngblood, sweating on a clear run to come his way, held up on the leader's back at this stage, third inside of Earth Station. Then came Parvo, locked up on the rails from Trunky Sting. Kentucky George second last, and Chip Moss dropped out to the tail of the field. Warwick's off with Trunky Sting, 600 metres to go, but our maestro still shows the way. Second quarter of the mile, 30 seconds even. The Victorian, our maestro, about to be joined by the Sting. Trunky Sting levels up, almost got to our maestro. A length away. Rufus Youngblood still in search of a run. Chip Moss has dashed around the outside to fourth. That quarter, 29.8. Then came Parvo, Kentucky, George, and forget about Earth Station and Smooth Prince, but on the home corner. Knights only kidding to them with our maestro, 200 metres to run. Our maestro by a length, Warwick driving desperately on Trunky Sting. Rufus Youngblood in all sorts of trouble on the fence. Our maestro clear. Trunky Sting trying to bridge the gap. Our maestro just in front. Look at Rufus Youngblood flat. Flashing through on the fence, too late. Our maestro won the golden nugget from Rufus Youngblood. Trunky Sting may be third from Kentucky, Georgia. That close finish left open the argument of who was Australia's best four-year-old. That was expected to be decided when the pair clashed in Sydney during the following month's Inter-Dominion series. Rufus Youngblood rocketed back into contention with an impressive front-running exhibition to beat our maestro in his second heat, making amends for his narrow defeat in the golden nugget final. Rufus Youngblood cemented his place in the grand final by running on strongly for second behind Karelta Gift in his final heat, but drew barrier eight in the big one and was never a possibility before finishing ninth to our maestro who led throughout. Rufus Youngblood raced until he was eight and bowed out with a career record of 135 starts for 32 wins and 40 placings and stake money of over $517,000. He won on five metropolitan tracks, with the majority of his wins, 17, being posted at Mooney Valley.